man what is happening my youtube family of course it is your boy be new i am coming at you on this saturday morning of course positive vibrations and energy and blessings out to all those who could be listening i know last night i said i went on the positive vibration tip because i was so pissed off regarding the lakers loss last night and just a horrible performance in which they displayed on the road in the city of boston at the garden not the boston garden but the td garden and that just didn't make no sense. You thought they might have been at the Boston Garden and they was going against Larry Bird, McHale and company, but they was just going against Al Horford and Tatum. They should have won the game, but they didn't. And there's a lot of different reasons why. And I know on the video yesterday that I pointed out the horrific coaching, which I still will contend that the, the coaching has been terrible, has been awful under vocal this whole time, and that LeBron has once again made up for coaching deficiencies of deficiencies. Y'all know what the hell I'm trying to say. Deficiencies of the coach. Winning in spite of the coach. Now you can say what you want to. Vogel has made some adjustments here and there, but at the end of the day, he has never been good at rotations. But one thing that he has always been good at is uh coaching up teams to be great great defensive teams whether he was at indiana or whether he was at uh in at la now of course you know coaches don't get out on the hardwood and play which i said already uh that you have to have the correct personnel and players in place to be able to play and execute but when you're showing when your players are also not only executing correctly but also showing a lack of effort then that doesn't just come from the players that come from the coaches because we all know that it takes coaches to motivate these players too because think about it why in the world uh what about pat riley pat riley when he was down in miami and was able to motivate them phil jackson all the different things he was doing you got leaders of men and that's what coaches need to be leaders of men somebody who can go out and motivate you and i understand you're getting paid millions of dollars and you got your pride on the line and things of that nature but you also got to have somebody who can rally the troops you got to have that as a voice of a player in the locker room which i don't think the lakers are suffering from a lack of leadership because they do have of course lebron james but at the end of the day you know you still have to have a coaching staff that can come together with defensive schemes and last night uh just constantly the lakers give up more points in the paint uh, than any team in the league except for Houston Rockets. And that, that is awful. How can you give up the most points in the paint? You have Anthony Davis, Dwight Howard, uh, and DeAndre Jordan, which, of course, they're not just the best big man, but at the end of the day, they are rim protectors, and Anthony Davis is a great defensive player. So what is going on to where the Lakers are giving up so much points in the paint? I understand that you no longer have Caldwell Pope. You no longer have Caruso. You no longer have... Uh, uh, Danny Green players that can get out and play defense and I think that's going to change when the Lakers uh, I think that's going to change when the Lakers get back a reason even though I know he's older and the Lakers need youth but he played 20 some minutes a game with Miami last year and he's more than capable of defending he's not going to just he, he wouldn't have let Tatum do all what he was doing last night which Tatum is a superstar and is going to get his but it doesn't make sense for the Lakers to go out and have Anthony Davis get out rebounded by Jason Tatum how is Jason Tatum controlling the boards? How is Jason Tatum in here getting all the rebounds and all the putbacks? Why is Anthony Davis steadily sinking outside of the paint? And I understand you want to play small and play Anthony Davis at center. You know, I think that's a good thing, but I don't, that's why I said Marcus Saul. Uh, you should have kept him even though he was older. He could spread the floor as a big man and still allow AD to play the four. But now the only way you can spread the floor with a big man is have AD playing the five, which is still a good thing. And you can see the Lakers started off the quarter. They had 38 points in the first quarter. You had THT, LeBron, Anthony Davis, everybody playing in unison. But the thing is, uh, another thing Frank Vogel isn't doing, he's not getting LeBron James and Anthony Davis enough time on the court together. As you can see what they did in the first quarter, they was a very free-flowing offense with Anthony Davis and LeBron James on the court with each other and setting each other up for easier looks. But then, uh, now I will say in the, at the start of the third quarter when you came out with that lineup, that's what really gave the game away because you let them go on a quick 8-0 or 9-0 run, and after that, you never got back uh, even close. And once you let that third quarter, once again, the third quarter woes, I don't understand what's going on with the coaching. You know, some teams are making, apparently making adjustments at halftime and apparently other teams coached by Frank Vogel are not. Uh, I know a lot of people saying, 
uh, get Jeff Van Gundy, uh, Steve, uh, Stan Van Gundy, or whoever, Mark Jackson. You know, I personally, I would like to see Fizdale, uh, even though I know it's his first year as an assistant, I would personally like to see him as the head coach. Uh, I think he did a great job in Memphis. I think he would have did a great job in New York, had given the proper opportunity with right personnel, uh, and he's been a great assistant coach, and also was an assistant coach when, my, uh, when LeBron won championships in Miami, and so they do have a relationship and a familiarity with one another. Uh, I would like to see Fizdale step into that head coaching job because when he was with Memphis, he did a great job at rotations and he, he did a great job of motivating players. I mean, he grew up, if I'm not mistaken, in Compton himself. So he, he, he can relate to players from all backgrounds and things of that nature. But at the end of the day, uh, the players still have to execute. And what I'm noticing from the Lakers is they have a lack of uh, – not tenacity, but just a lack of motivation or whatever it is on closeouts. You cannot, you know, teams now are rotating the ball quick. And as I said before, you cannot be quicker than the ball. And that's what teams do, pass, 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 especially Golden State, they're great at doing that. You make all these extra passes. By making all these extra passes, uh, you are getting better shots because you're getting more open shots. But you have to have shooters that are capable of knocking down these open shots in order to be successful. So when the Lakers are playing defense, when these teams are making extra passes, they keep looking around like, oh, who made this mistake? Or, oh, who made that mistake? Like, oh, I rotated. I rotated off my man to come help. But then my man ended up hitting the shot. Why didn't you come help? You all have to keep helping. Keep rotating, rotate, rotate, rotate. And get out. I mean, that's something that, that's just simple. And they are not doing it. And they're not doing a very good job of it. And I understand Dennis Schroeder is quick and he can get to the paint. And he does that against a lot of teams. But at the end of the day, it is embarrassing just to have him time and time again just to keep driving down through the lane, driving to the paint, steadily scoring. You know, and Frank Vogel, you don't even put in, uh, like I said last night, it really upset me. You did not put in uh, Baysmore until the end of the game. To garbage time, but yet he's shown that he can play defense even since he's been with the Lakers. But somehow he get out the rotation because Monk come in and hit a few threes. Just because Monk come in and hit a few threes, that don't. I mean, you still have to know other teams' strengths and weaknesses. You have to know your opponent's strengths and weaknesses. If you are a general, a leader, a, 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 let's say in an army situation or whatever, you have to know the strengths and weaknesses of who you're going against and who is on your squad and what they do best and put them in positions to be successful. And that's something that he's not doing. I love Carmelo Anthony, but guess what? There's a reason why he was out of the league. He can come in and hit threes when that's what you need. That's not what the Lakers were needing last night. The Lakers were needing somebody who could play defense. And to be honest, LeBron looked like he was the only one who was rotating and playing good defense. Up until the lead, the lead started to balloon out of control. And I don't understand these lineups you have on the floor where you just not putting the right lineups together when you have depth and you just don't know how to use it. If Marcus Smart was having his way with Avery Bradley, then why not go back and to, and bring in some bring in a base more or somebody who has more length than him and get him a chance throughout the course of the game. You can't just come with one game plan and stick to it because when the other teams make adjustments and you're not adjusting back to it, then you're going to end up with losses. And that's just that simple. Now, like I said, this wasn't going to be a negative video. I still feel like, and I'm very confident, I'm not you saw the look on LeBron's face last night. You think he worried? I'm not worried. You know, I know a lot of people talking about, you know, even in the comments, LeBron James era is over. You know, it's not. I mean, he's not the best player in the NBA anymore, which we've all known that. But his era is not over. I mean, depending on what you're defining, what you mean by his era, we're not saying his reign on the top was short like leprechauns because he still got Anthony Davis on the squad. Now, Russell Westbrook may not have been the best decision, but at the end of the day, I still think they can make it work. They just have to learn. They have to learn each other on the court. And that's something, when you got 12 new players, 11 new players, then that's what it's going to take some time. You just have to be patient. And then people people in the comments last night, whoever that was, I meant to address this. I, I should have read the comments before I posted this video, before I uh, recorded this, but was saying, you know, uh, when I said that this was the coach's fault, 
I never said it was the coach's fault. I said it, a lot of it is to do with the with the coach because at the end of the day, you wouldn't have coaches and be paying them millions of dollars if you didn't need one. You understand what I'm saying? I know the players have to be the ones to execute, but coaches have to come up with game plans and put players in position to be successful. It's that simple. And then people in the comments, oh, it's not the coach and you make excuses for LeBron. LeBron will never be Jordan. Why are you Jordan fan boys so worried about LeBron James? I'm making a video about the Celtics. In the, in the loss last night and you worried about Jordan. Why are you bringing up Jordan? What do Jordan got to do with this? LeBron, 37 years old. What the hell was Jordan doing at 37 years old? He quit! Because they was trading Scotty and they was getting rid of Phil. So he quit. Because he didn't want to come and experiment like LeBron got experimenting with new players. He didn't want to do that because he had Scotty by his side the whole time. And now if he wasn't going to have Scotty and he wasn't going to have Phil, then he didn't want to fool with it. But then he missed basketball so much that he came back. He missed basketball so much that he came back and at that age still couldn't get Washington to the damn playoffs. And you trying to compare uh, him to LeBron. What, what, compare him to at that age to LeBron then, fam. Compare him at that same age. But you know he had just came off a championship. Ain't taking nothing away from the great Michael Jordan. He had just came off a championship. But hell, LeBron just came off a championship. Y'all can say it's a bubble championship, and you say what it was. Everybody had the same damn opportunity. It's still a damn championship. And if it had not been for injuries last year, who knows? Especially with the Nets going down. Because I think the Lakers can take the Bucks. I still think the Lakers can take the Bucks. Shit, they just y'all y'all so wishy washy and all you feel just about a loss. When they just lost to the Bucks, they barely lost by seven or eight points to the Bucks without LeBron James. They have a quality win over the Miami Heat, even though Jimmy Butler went out in the second half. We understand that. But they had quality wins. Their first game against Golden State, they barely lost. They controlled the game in the first half. It's 60-some games left, like LeBron said. Now, if you get 40 games into this and they below 500, holla at me. If you get if, if you get to 45 games and the Lakers 22 and 25 and you know, uh, whatever it is, holla at me. Please. But you talking about eight and nine and LeBron done missed seven of those games, man. Stop it. Please stop it. And it's his first day back on the court and was looking good. You saw what he was doing, hitting the long range three, had the fadeaway going, was active on the defensive side. Russell Westbrook didn't look as bad. You know, he did make some dumb mistakes as usual. Anthony Davis' shot was looking pretty crispy. He scored good. It was a soft, uh, quiet 30 points I think he had. But, you know, in the bigger moments, he could have stepped up. But at the end of the day, you know, they let the lead balloon out of control. Uh, Celtics gained confidence. It's the NBA, y'all. It happens all the time. Teams go on runs. Crowds get into games. Teams grow confidence. They shot start falling. The other teams say, F it, we got another game. It's not the NFL, like, 16 games. It's 82 games. They say, you know what, man? we we'll just do better on the next go-round. You know what I'm saying? So at the end of the day, yes, the Western Conference looked nice. If you look up, up above the Lakers, one through eight, you got Portland, you got Denver, you got Phoenix. You understand? You got Golden State, you got Memphis. One of those teams, and of course, you got to play in. But one of those teams is not going to be too happy because the Lakers is about to be like the Jeffersons. They moving on up. They about to be moving on up. And if you look at these next games coming up, you know, in the next seven or eight games, you got Detroit twice. You know what I'm saying? You got you got some, some lesser quality opponents, and you got to take those kind of games to go ahead and build continuity uh, when you got lesser quality opponents like that just to go ahead and build continuity with the team and – Y'all, I need to get some gaze because, you know what I'm saying? I don't want to be out here stranded. But like I was saying, you have to build that continuity with the, with your teammates in order to be successful and learn each other. And I can see with LeBron back, the Lakers, they although they were playing some isolated ball, uh, they were moving that ball around, that, uh, around a little bit more than normal than what I've really been accustomed to seeing so far this season. And that is a good thing. So, uh, you know, I feel like the Lakers still have a great opportunity to be a championship contender. I'm not sitting up here saying, oh, by any means, that the Lakers, bar none, is going to go out and win the championship based off what I've seen because I'm not delusional. But I understand about ceilings. 
I understand about potential. I understand all these kind of things that a lot of you might not understand. So what you need to do is get your mind ready and understand that the Lakers will be moving on up, like I said, and not worry about it, man. Y'all, y'all kill me just saying these things like, oh, you know, just panicking and being so scared that it's over with and it just started with 11 new players. I can see if it was just like, you know, two new players you added, but you added a, a new, I mean, a new starters at that. New starters. Not just new players, but new starters. You added a Westbrook, a THT starter, he's not normally used to starting. You can start in DeAndre Jordan. I mean, you've had all kind of lineups with all these new starters. So, you know, I thought it was a mistake to let go of KCP, even though he was so damn sometime he on his three, but he always played excellent defense. I thought it was a mistake to let go of Caruso. I think you could have held on to Caruso. Go back and look at my tape before the season, and everybody laughed at me, and everybody said, oh, man, they ain't got Caruso. They got bad. They got, you know, whatever. But at the end of the day, Caruso, he got heart on defense, and he gives you what you need with that defensive tenacity. I'm hoping that none, when he comes back, he's capable of playing good defense. Uh, he was impressing the coaches a lot during the preseason. Uh, during the uh, you know, training camp and everything, uh, thinking that he could be an excellent wing defender as well. And of course, we know that he can he can knock down capable shots, but the Lakers gotta get out their own damn head. You understand? And another thing you need to understand is the Lakers are the hunted team. They hunt it. They are the hunted team. So even though they're not the defending champions, when they go out time in and time, uh, night in and night out, when you got a LeBron James on the team, people are gonna show up and give it everything they got because not only do you have one of, one of who many people consider to be the GOATs or one of the greatest of all times that you're going up against, even though he's uh, somewhat past his prime, and you also taking on an organization uh, like the Los Angeles Lakers, everybody gonna try to, you know, give it extra and give it they all to go out and get a W. You don't understand what I'm saying? But at the end of the day, let's let's revisit this. I guarantee you in two weeks, if you look at the schedule, the, the next coming up schedule on this road trip, the Pacers, Detroit, you know what I'm saying, what I'm saying? And let's not forget the Lakers, look, beat Charlotte without LeBron. And Charlotte has been, they've been playing pretty good. They beat Golden State. Golden State only has two losses. You understand what I'm saying? And one of those was to Charlotte. And speaking of Golden State, you see the difference when you got good coaching, <laughs> good coaching that move the ball and you have game plans. Uh, Draymond and Steph set last night, and even though it was against Detroit Pistons, they were still able to win the game. Jordan Poole showed up and showed out, and I've been saying that. But anyway, man, fight a lot of die. You know what I'm saying? I'm not going to sit up here and cry about it. You know, I'm, I'm not really concerned. It's still a lot of basketball left to be played so as always man it's just your boy be new i'm gonna just keep on saying right on to the real and much love to these haters man i'm about to here until next time